Hello to everybody on uh, face on this Facebook land. This is Sonia Swan, and if you're following this and you're used to seeing me, you might just notice that I have straight hair today. So you might be used to seeing curly hair. This is a new deal for me with the little top knot thing going on. And uh, it's a new year, right? New year, new look, at least for now. And if you are watching this on the replay, welcome to the replay. So today we are going to be talking about four things that are going to rock your health in 2018. Are you ready for this? Four things. Most of them are free or close to free. So they're not going to cost you a lot, but they are going to improve your health dramatically. Just these four things if you do them in 2018. So if you don't know a little bit about my story, I was very, very sick back in uh, 1998. I had Lyme disease and I was very, very ill. Um, hey, Jennifer, how are you? Okay, great. We've got some folks joining in. Thank you. This is my new look, girl. Uh, thank you very much, Miss Lori. Thank you, Lori Humphrey. Yes, thank you so much. I'm not sure my kids don't like it, but I like it. So I, you know, you got to like it yourself, I guess. All right. So um, I'm going to try to be looking at comments as I go through this, because I know you guys are going to want to ask questions about these four things. And I can kind of see them down here and post them up on the screen. Also, if you think some of your friends would like to watch this, you can share this while it's going on or tag people while it's going on. I actually did the same video in my private group yesterday. I thought I did it on here, but I did it in my private group. It ended up working out really well. And so I thought I would redo it today for all of you in Facebook land that I love and care about. My goal, one of my goals for 2018 is to contribute more and more to the entire community and to everybody's lives. Um, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. That is very sweet. Um, thank you, Paulette. I appreciate it. <clears throat> All right, y'all guys, you're doing good. Boosting my uh, self-confidence here. <laughs> okay, greetings from Singapore, Yanni. Hello. It's good to see you. Wow. All around the world. Now you're making me really nervous. <laughs> I am so excited to share these four things because when I was sick back in 1998 and I had Lyme disease, I was really sick. And some of you out there may be really sick or have some really serious health challenges that you think nothing is going to help. And so just so that you know and know that I can give you sympathy, when I had Lyme disease, I had hives from my tailbone to my spine all over my body. I had migrating arthritis everywhere. I had a foggy brain. I couldn't think very well. And um, I was walking hunched over. I had no energy. I would have to take two or three naps during the day and really had a difficult time even carrying on a conversation because I couldn't keep my mind focused on the issue. So, you know, if you're going through something like that, that I do understand where you're coming from. OK, I absolutely understand. So please know that these four things are powerful. And even though they seem really simple, they are life changing. All right. So being a health seeker, I had to find natural ways to improve my health because the doctors had given up on me. I'd had a ton of antibiotics. I'd had some malaria drugs and everything else. Actually had a ton of antibiotics on my life for many years. And I was getting worse, but the doctor said they had cured me. So I had to be a seeker and find out what were those things that I could do to improve my health. And because I went through that journey, now I can share with you those things that will maybe inspire you in some certain areas as well that will improve your health. All right. Yeah, it does get long. It looks long when it's not curly, doesn't it, Tammy? That's crazy. It's always this long, but when it's all curled up in ringlets, you can't tell that it's this long. So. There you go. Um, and two, like, you know, I always wanted hair that you could like run your fingers through your hair. But when you've got that curly hair, it's like <laughs> you can't do that. So now I can like play with it. And if you see me playing with my hair, it's just because it's fun now that it's straight today. <laughs> I can do that. All right. So the first thing that I want to encourage you about and something that I learned way back when I had Lyme disease was I realized, you know, I joined I, I we didn't have Facebook back then. 
but I didn't really join in any of the Lime communities or back then it was, I don't know, what was it like Google chat or Yahoo groups type of thing. I didn't do a lot of that because what I was seeing was that everybody was identifying with their disease. So everybody was saying, oh, poor me, this is so hard, you, so hard to kill Lyme, you're never going to get better, you know, nobody knows what it's like, and they would regale all of the ways that they felt awful. And I didn't really want to hear how hard this thing was to kill or how difficult this journey was. I wanted to know what I could do to get better. I wanted solutions. So I really didn't hang out with a lot of people that had the same thing that I had. I started hanging out with people that would feed me um, solutions and, and a good mindset. So I realized early on as I was feeling so weak and I couldn't do a whole lot that I was not going to let my limitations keep me from living life. So I would go out and garden even though I was tired and I knew my feet would be swollen up. I wouldn't be able to work, walk on them after I gardened. And one day I went to an event with a gal who's now a friend, but she was just an acquaintance then. Her name is Shannon Hudson. Actually, I had heard this on one of her CDs before, but I heard her say it again when I went to her event. And that was she would repeat this mantra to herself all the time, no matter what situation, no matter what problem came up. She would say, I am blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you. Somebody asked her how you're doing. She's in pain. She'd say, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. She was in a shoe store looking, couldn't find the right pair of shoes and starting to get frustrated. And she'd just say, nope, I am blessed and highly favored. So I began saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. I am blessed and highly favored all of the time. <clears throat> Even now with this little cough, I am blessed and highly favored. And that began a mindset set shift for me. It began my beginnings of my learning conscious language, which was about the same time that I picked up on conscious language. So if you don't know what conscious language is, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is Our House of Life, L-I-F-E, and or just Google Sonia Conscious Language, and you can watch that. We're not going to do that all today, but just this one phrase. If you will just repeat this one phrase, no matter what's going on, some you get in a fight with somebody, something else is happening, it's a rough day, whatever, say out loud, you know what? I am blessed and highly favored. This is all going to work out. It's fine. I'm blessed and highly favored. Good things always come to me. Uh, th this is no problem, right? That will be powerful for you. And the more and more that you say it, the more and more you're, it will sink down in your heart and you will really begin to believe it without even thinking, you know what? I'm blessed and highly favored. This is all going to work out fine. Um, Let's see. Tammy says, because this is relates, I think you quit several fibromyalgia groups because of the same thing. It was all negative and awful. Yes, that is what I found, that people just wanted to be identified with that disease. And they um, they were attached to their victimhood. And not that, you know, we don't ever feel still like a victim sometimes, but I don't want to be attached to that. I want to recognize that and flip it around as quickly. Yes, Katrina. Yes, you are blessed and highly favored. Absolutely. <clears throat> Love that. And just picking it up, beginning to say it, beginning to type it, beginning to speak it. And your health will actually improve. You know, there's there's a whole uh, there's a whole study of what we say that comes out of our mouth and what comes back to us. You know, what we reap, we sow. What we put out there, we get back. If we focus on the positive, we will get positive back. If we focus on the negative, we will get negative back. So rather than taking you through today, a whole segment on conscious language and changing your words and changing your thoughts and all that, and let this just be a beginning for you. This is a new year, right? Happy New Year, the second day of the new year. And every day is a new day. So today you can start out by saying, I am blessed and highly favored. And thank you, Shannon Hudson, for that phraseology. I love it. And now hopefully everybody that's listening to this will begin saying that too. And every one of us that has a better attitude, we actually affect the entire earth. There's a whole nother science about that, but your frequency actually affects the whole frequency of the planet. So you saying and you're blessed and highly favored, you getting in a better mental spirit is going to help rock your health. That's the first thing, right? Four things to help you rock your health in the new year. And that's the first thing. I am blessed and highly favored. Okay. Thank you. All right. I like that. Uh, Joanne says, I look amazing and younger than the last time you saw me. Yay. 
So that's the goal, right? 25 forever and getting younger. <laughs> yes, there is power in our words, um, Haley. There is definitely power in our words. Okay, so that is one of my goals. Let me get this back. Yes. Um, hold on just a minute. That is one of my goals is to be on here live with you. I do a lot of lives in my personal group with I have a little um, business group and I do a lot of lives in there. But one of my goals is to be live here with you more often. So the second thing, because I don't want to take your whole night, is um, that e it's easy, it's inexpensive, and it is powerful. Are you ready? And that is, maybe some of you have guessed it, water. Okay? Drinking water. Let's talk about this. Sometimes we start out the new year and we have this wonderful health goal. We're going to lose weight. We're going to um, start exercising, etc. And we maybe start eating the right things. And maybe we do start exercising, but we don't give our body this little beautiful substance right here called water. And water is very powerful. Do you know this is the only substance that you can drink and it goes kick and go directly to your brain? Right. It doesn't really have to be digested and processed because it's just water. And did you know you're about 65 to 70 percent water? And if we don't get enough water in our bodies, I truly believe I was just reading an article today that said 75 percent of the people in the world are dehydrated, chronically dehydrated. What that means is you might be you might be if you are walking around with little cells. If you think of a raisin and a grape. You might be walking around with a little cell that looks like a raisin and it's trying to function and do the functions of this nice plump grape over here, this well hydrated. So what we're going to talk about today is how to get ourselves from a raisin over to a grape, right? How to how to get hydration into the body and what kind of hydration. All right. So most health experts say, of course, you've heard this a million times. I'm sure we should be drinking half of our body weight in ounces in water. That means if you weigh 140 pounds, 70 ounces of water. So that sounds like, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. But when you think about it, that's, you know, this is maybe a cup of water here. This is not really big. And this would be, mm, you know, 10 of these little cups, eight ounces of water is a cup, right? So that's not that much. Now, some people don't drink water for a couple of reasons. They don't drink water, number one, because there's other better tasting beverages like pop and coffee. And just so you know, if you drink pop or coffee or highly caffeinated beverages, those will actually dehydrate you, okay? Because caffeine is a dehydrator, it's a um, diuretic. So it will take water out of your cells and out of your body. That means you need to drink even more than half of your body daily body weight in ounces, but just water. This is really inexpensive. The, I read a book many years ago called Your Body's Many Cries for Water. And this doctor that began researching, he actually was in, um, uh, I think, a foreign prison somewhere. And he began treating the prisoners that he was with with just water. And now he uses water and salt in certain situations. And he was he was helping people recover from heart issues and um, cardiac issues and other serious things, skin things, and all kinds of things, just by making sure their cells were hydrated. Our cells cannot work if they are dehydrated. So people do come to me at many times for various um, health advice, let's say, or maybe to throw out some ideas to them about health things. And let me tell you something. If your body is dehydrated, there is nothing you can take that will help. It might help just a little bit or temporarily, but if dehydration is at the root of your illness, you cannot get better until you give your body what it needs, which is water. It needs water. It doesn't need soda pop. It doesn't need that um, Snapple iced tea. It doesn't need um, that juice. What it needs is water. OK, so as people tell me a couple of things. You quit drinking pop about four years ago. That is awesome. That is awesome. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Half of the body weight in ounces. Somebody says alkaline water, ridding all the acidic um, elements in your body. Yes. So hydration is the key. Um, and most people don't drink water because it doesn't taste good. And if you are drinking city tap water, that's probably true. And if you are drinking city tap water, may I just beg you something in this new year? Can you make a commitment to me? Please do not drink city tap water. 
So I know a lot of people say tap water safe. It's all fine. But let me tell you what tap water has in it um, chlorine, which inhibits your thyroid gland um, and does some other damage in the body. It contains farm runoff. It still contains um, um, pharmaceutical drugs. Um, sometimes it, there's many other substances in tap water that are doing damage to our body. And because I do some scans on people, a lot of times water contaminants will come up as one of those things that are toxic to them and causing stress in their body, just contaminants from the water. So if you are going to drink water, may I encourage you to get some type of water filtration, even if it's just a little one, even if it's, um, you know, uh, just filtering out the chlorine to begin with. That's a start. And I, I understand a lot of people like the Berkey water systems. Those are great and they don't take electricity. So that's fabulous. Um, I personally at home distill my water and then I add minerals in. So if you are drinking distilled or RO, which is reverse osmosis water, you want to be sure to be giving your body minerals because both of those waters um, are hungry water. That means they're, they're devoid of all of the minerals that normally accompany water. And so they're going to actually they need to be pH balanced, right? So you don't want to pour distilled water in a metal pan because it'll pull the metals out of the pan. You don't want to pour distilled water in a plastic jug because it'll pull the plastic out of the jug to balance itself, if that makes sense. So just some kind of water treatment system um, that you're drinking out of out of your sink. Now, other people like to drink bottled water. Um, so let me let me give you just a little tip on bottled water. Number one, I, I try to drink bottled water as little as I can when I'm out because plastic water bottles and I don't have one here, but plastic water bottles um, are going to pick up some of the plastic and you're going to be getting that when you're drinking out of plastic water bottles. However, if you've got to drink something and you're out and you want to drink some water, I will tell you my two favorite best tasting waters. Um, that are to me uh, and through my research, what I feel like are the cleanest. Some other people may have some other favorite brands, but I love Fiji water and Ice Mountain. Those are two of the ones that I drink. If you're in the South, I think Arrowhead Mills is a fairly good water. So when I do have to drink water and I'm out, I'll drink that. However, if you have a filter already at home, it's really easy to take that water with you. Let me just encourage you, like you can get these little gallon jugs that are glass. Can you hear that? So this is a glass like milk jug. And if you have your own filter at home, you can fill up these bottles and refill whatever it is that you take with you. Some people love these little um, bottles like this. OK, these ones have a little silicone straw already in them. So that's kind of fun. And they're protected this way. Uh, my friend and I designed a water bottle that looks like this. It's got positive affirmation words all over it. Love, joy, motivation, believe, valor courage, abundance, highest potential, etc. So if you don't know about words imprinting water, go look up Dr. Emoto. That's very, very powerful and um, will structure your water, too. So. So water is so powerful. Some people think they're hungry and they keep eating and eating. But what their body really wants is water. So before you eat that big meal, drink a glass of water and I guarantee you, you will likely eat less food because you've given your body what it needs. Some people will say, well, you shouldn't drink water before your meal because it dilutes your stomach acid. I don't believe that. I've done a lot of research on this, and I believe that your body really does need water, um, whether it's be before your meal, with your meal, in between meals. We need that water. Your intestines needs that water. It needs it to be able to grind up, the, you know, mix up the food in your intestines. So. Don't worry about drinking water with your meals. It's actually great. Maybe even a little splash of apple cider vinegar in there would be fun. So the, um, so the other thing that we can do about taste. Yeah, you're welcome. You'd love to see my distilling process someday. <laughs> yeah, I. Um, yes, I, uh, I did a little countertop distiller. It was about three hundred dollars, I think. Um, and. You like that water bottle, Pat? Good. Yes, it was really fun to create, and we 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 love it. You can't really see how beautiful it is, but it's got this etching on it that just it really looks beautiful. If you do get one of these, I will post the link to that below. Um, be sure to hand wash this lid. This does not go in the dishwasher. This can. This cannot. It will. Um, that hot hot water will dissolve the glue on the lid and make this little piece kind of move around. So hand wash this. You can put this in the 
um, put that in the dishwasher if you so choose. Cutest water bottle ever. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I really love it. And I'm so thankful for talented friends that can help me design stuff like that. So the other thing that you can do with water is add something to it. And I didn't bring it down, but um, Sweet Leaf Stevia makes a organic water drop that you can put in your water, which is certainly great. Um, you can find that on Amazon, and I will post the link when I'm off of here to that Sweet Leaf Stevia. Uh, it's a flavor, all natural flavors, and it's organic and etc. The other thing that you can do, of course, is uh, there are there's a company out there called Young Living. Many of you are familiar with, and Young Living. Uh, makes some vitality oils that you can put in your water. These are essential oils, so they're not like a fatty oil, and you just can just drip those in your water, whatever's your favorite flavor. Um, grapefruit vitality, orange, tangerine, lemon, lime, whatever. Some people like peppermint in their water. So that's a great way to flavor your water without getting any more calories and making it taste good and being able to enjoy that water. Do you guys have a favorite flavor of essential oil that you like to put in your water? Thank you, Karen. I appreciate that. Oh, the doctor that wrote the book, I, I can't pronounce his name. It starts out and it looks like Batman. Um, but if you just look up your body's many cries for water, you will find that. And I will post a link to his book on Amazon when I'm off of here. But it's a really good book. I read that in the very beginning of my healing journey. And um, really began to drink a lot more water. I was not a water drinker before that. So I don't know if you've ever noticed people that are maybe they're 50, but they look like they're 70 because they haven't taken care of their body. They look all dehydrated and kind of, you know, wrinkled up because we're not taking care of our body and we're doing things that dehydrate it like coffee and alcohol, etc. So if you're doing those other things, be sure to drink more water. Um, I'm just looking at the comments really quick here. Yeah, you love spearmint. Yes, they're all I, I didn't mention spearmint, but they're all so lovely. Grapefruit, lemon, um, tangerine, uh, frozen berries. Yeah, you can actually infuse your water. There are some water bottles that look like this that have a little fruit infuser in them and that kind of hangs in the top. And you can actually infuse your water with real fruit. My caution to you, as always, is be sure to use organic fruit. There are pesticides and herbicides on other fruits that will um, decrease your health. And that's certainly not what we want in 2018. Um, which minerals did I add? Okay. Um, normally, if somebody's going to take minerals, there is a great mineral. If they're just going to take minerals, there's a, a supplement called, <coughs> excuse me, Mineral Essence from Young Living. But I don't add that to my water in this big thing. So there is a liquid mineral that I love from Dr. Garland. And I think now his website is um, used to be askdrgarland.com, but it's called Life Transfusion Minerals, I think. And it's an ionic mineral that goes right into the body. It's really super absorbable. It's the 72 minerals. So that's one I like. I'll try to remember to post that link as well. As I go through here and I watch this replay, I'll start posting all these links. So that's my favorite mineral to add to this. I add about 20 um, drops. Just add whatever until you don't like the taste of it, right? Because minerals do have a little bit of a salty taste. So if you, you can add less if you like less. Uh, I am coughing less tonight. I'm getting better and better every day because I am blessed and highly favored, right? <laughs> I, if you guys don't know, I lost my voice. Uh, I was running a, this contest and like the first day of the contest, I lost my voice and I just got it back a couple of days ago. So if you hear me coughing, that's just because it's part of my voice coming back. All right. So number one was I'm blessed and highly favored Four powerful things to rock your health this new year. One is your attitude. Uh, uh, Zig Ziglar says your attitude determines your altitude. Jim Rohn says it's not what happens to you in this life, but how, what you do about what happens that makes the difference. So what happens, happens to everybody. It's how we react to it. Are we going to be down and out or are we going to say, you know what? I'm an overcomer. This is no problem. I've got this. So number one, blessed and highly favored. Number two, water. And I'm sure there's something else I can remember about water. Oh, remember that when you are thirsty, it is your body's last cry for water. That means you're really, really dehydrated. 
We really shouldn't be getting thirsty during the day if we are giving our body the right amount of water. Um, I am a little bit thirsty right now, so that means I need to drink more. But that is your body's last cry, and it needs it for every function. Number three, all right, and don't hate me for this one because this one is going to be a challenge for some of you. It's not going to cost you anything, but it's going to be a challenge for some of you. And this is when I was sick with Lyme disease and I had all of these symptoms, and I related them all that just to the Lyme because I had Lyme. That's why I was so you know, torn up and had hives and arthritis and all this. What I realized over the years was that my diet was affecting my health. And so I began taking things out of my diet one by one. And the doctors that I, the natural doctors that I consulted with at the time, this was kind of before the internet, believe it or not, said to me, Sonia, you've got overgrowth of candida and your liver is toxic. You've got to start doing some things about that. And so I did. So one of the things, the first things that I took out of my diet was white processed sugar. One of the things that can rock your health in 2004 is getting the white processed sugar out of your house and out of your mouth. I, I know people say it's as addictive as cocaine. That's how addictive sugar is. It really is a drug. And just so you know, sugar is not only not a nutrient, not only does it not contribute to the body, but sugar is actually an anti-nutrient. Sugar actually robs the body of other nutrients. In a way, you could say that it robs the body of B vitamins because you need more B vitamins when you're eating sugar. And your B vitamins are what pick you up and give you energy. And your B vitamins are what calm you down and help you maintain. And sugar robs you of that. Sugar raises your cortisol levels. And if you know what cortisol levels are, those are your stress hormones. Those are the things that kick in when your little kid is stuck under a car so you can grab it and pick up the car when you're a hundred pound little woman and you can pick up the whole car. That's what cortisol is designed for. But in our common modern diet, we're getting sugar that's raising our cortisol and we're eating it all day long. I said 2004 instead of 2018. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> I am timeless. I am here and there and everywhere. Okay, so Dixie says her joints feel so much better without sugar. Yay, Dixie. Hi, Shannon Terry. How are you? Uh, Lisa Cascio says Dr. Garland's website is now Body as Doctor. Oh, good. And she's posting the link. He is one of the sweetest individuals you will ever want to know. If you know who Gary Young is with Young Living, Dr. Garland is like the herb the herb version of Dr. Gary of uh, D. Gary Young. So Dr. Garland is one of the sweetest people you'll ever want to meet on this planet, has the cutest little accent too. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so sugar is toxic to you. So what do we do in our modern society today? We take a bunch of kids, we get, take them to a birthday party, we feed them cake and ice cream. One of the kids is sick and everybody gets sick. Why is that? Why aren't our immune systems kicking in? Well, that's because sugar actually cuts your immune system by half, 50% for at least four hours after you eat sugar. So what do we do at church or wherever you gather, you know, the soccer meet or the dance uh, recital or the, um, you know, church or wherever you congregate, we feed each other sugar, pies, cakes, coffee, donuts, all of these things that don't contribute to our health. and so that sugar consumption is harming our pancreas. It's really hard on our liver. Um, many people have insulin resistance, which usually shows up with belly fat um, because of sugar. So the more sugar they eat, the more insulin resistant they have. Their pancreas can't keep up with that. So this is a problem. Um, we know that type 2 diabetes, most of the time, 95% of the time, can be cured through diet and nutrition. Getting rid of sugar is huge, folks. It is absolutely huge. So when you think, let's go back to cortisol. So sugar increases cortisol levels, right? That's our stress hormone. Ah! So when sugar increases our cortisol levels, cort high cortisol levels over a period of time is totally correlated to inflammation. 
inflammation, your body being inflamed, your joints being inflamed, your gut being inflamed, your liver being inflamed, your brain, okay, everything gets inflamed when we're in high cortisol. So that's what sugar's doing. So if there was one thing I could pound into everyone's head this year, it would be um, when you eat that candy bar and you've got pain in your elbow, I want you to think every time you take a bite of the candy bar, I'm putting pain in my elbow. Eat a candy bar, pain in my elbow. Eat a candy bar, pain in my elbow or your knee or wherever it is. And pretty soon you're going to catch the correlation because you're going to feel it. You eat that donut and all of a sudden your joints are going to start to ache and your knee's going to hurt or something else is going to hurt. And you'll make that direct correlation. So sugar equals inflammation. Sugar equals inflammation. Say it with me. Sugar equals inflammation. Huge. This is huge. And again, people come to me sometimes for various types of health coaching. And one of the first things I say is, well, what are you doing? How's your diet? That's one of the things that we talk about. Um, they might say, well, I've got this going on or I have that going on or I have that going on. I say, how much sugar are you eating? And if they can't, if they won't get off of sugar, I can't help. Nothing, just like the water, if you're dehydrated, nothing's going to help. If you're on sugar and we're trying to get rid of inflammation through diet and other things, it's not going to happen because you're just dumping in inflammation every time, every time, every time. So sugar is a huge one. Now, there are some healthy alternatives that you can do for sugar. Stevia is a great one. Trim Healthy Mama has a stevia and erythritol blend. Um, erythritol is a sugar alcohol, but it's very uh, fairly natural and your body receives it really well. Has a, a little, if any, sugar grams to it. Does not increase your blood glucose levels. Um, some people like, I like um, erythritol. Not everybody likes that. Some people, they can get a little bit of gastrointestinal upset with erythritol. So some people like a xylitol erythritol mixture. Um, yesterday when I was doing this, somebody asked me about um, honey and honey is okay occasionally, but I would not do honey every day, especially if you think you have an overgrowth of candida, if you've been eating a lot of sugar. Um, I had to go on a 30 day detox of everything, every type of sugar. <clears throat> so I did a candida diet when I was really sick. I didn't eat fruits. I didn't eat anything. No, no sugars, no fructose, no honey, no brown rice syrup, no nothing. So that's always a good thing to do. And if you can't do that, just stopping the white processed sugar. Don't buy it anymore and don't put it in your cabinet anymore. And if you don't have it there, you're much less likely to eat it when you're out. OK. All right. I'm going to flip back up here. Yes, I am talking about refined sugar. Natural sugars in moderation like honey and maple syrup is still OK. Yes. You know, we do some honey. We love organic maple syrup. Just realize that honey and maple syrup will still raise your blood sugar levels. So if blood sugar is something that you have an issue with, you're going to want to really minimize the honey and maple syrup type of things. Um, you know, some people don't like agave. They think it has too much fructose. I don't mind a little bit of agave from time to time. It's bad. I like coconut sugar. Coconut sugar is um, a low glycemic sugar. So that's one that's fairly healthy. So this is what I'm going to do for you over this upcoming month. My commitment to you is to begin giving you some alternatives because I don't want to take something away from you without giving you something. It's a big deal for some of you to get off of sugar. I know this. It's huge. It was difficult for me. And it wasn't until I got really, really sick and I was educated that I realized I had to do this for my health, for me. Nobody's going to take the sugar out of your diet for you. Nobody's going to feed you a glass of water every day. You have got to do those things for yourself. And you are the only one that will take care of you. Nobody else is going to take care of you. So um, we have to love us first, right, and take care of us or we're not going to be around to take care of the other people around us. So let's see. What else? Um, what about sucralose? OK, um, that is a good question. Um, sucralose is actually an artificial sweetener that I do not like. Um, it usually comes up when I am talking with people and um, testing them. It is usually coming up as a stressor on their body, like an artificial sweetener, like um, please don't do the pink and blue and yellow packs. Those are not good for you. OK, those will be neurotoxic to your neurological system. Diet sodas and all of that. Let's not go there. There's there's plenty of alternatives. And I'm going to give you some of these coming up 
in the next um, all throughout this month, because, again, I want to give you solutions. If you want to get off a pop, I've got a solution for you. If you want to get off a candy bar, I got a solution for you. And it's really yummy. So that's coming. OK, so I will bring all of that here. We'll do some Facebook lives. We'll tell you where to get this stuff. It's not hard to get. People are people are waking up. This is so exciting. People are getting it. Now you can find so many more of these things in health food stores in our little town. Um, our high V stores have a whole health market and they're carrying a lot of the, these goods. So I will let you know where to find these all of these yummy, yummy things. So 95 percent of disease, Mayo Clinic says, comes from high cortisol, high stress. Ninety five percent of disease, Mayo Clinic says, comes from high cortisol, high stress. So if we can get that sugar out, we've just helped ourselves get rid of a huge cause of disease. Not to mention the fact that many of you already know, which is that cancer feeds on sugar. So I, I know some people I know years ago when my my own sweet um, stepdad was ill with cancer and, um, you know, the doctor said, we don't care what you eat at anything you want. So he was getting ice cream and and um, ice cream floats and whatever, because that's what he wanted. They wanted to put weight on him. That is so dangerous. It is just dangerous for us because cancer feeds on sugar and cancer. I don't I can't remember. I didn't look at the current statistics, but the last time I looked, I thought it outpaced heart disease as the number one cause of death in America being cancer. And I don't think there's a person that I'm talking to today that cancer has not affected your life or the life of somebody that you love. So education, that's what we've got to do is to educate and then we can all be healthy together. This is so fun. OK, this um, Katrina says if she wants some fizz, she drinks some kombucha. OK, there you go. So kombucha is an alternative. Remember, it still does have some sugar in it. It's cultured on sugar. So just keep 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 track of your sugar um, grams in there. If you don't have a problem with candida right now, then fruit is great. I'm not afraid of fruit at all. I, I love fruit in um, in moderation, just like everything else. Right. A couple of pieces of fruit today, a couple of pieces of um, um, vegetables. Just don't make it all fruit. Right. Um, kind of give it a mix up because your body does like to mix it up. If you eat a banana every day for three months, pretty soon your body's not going to like bananas. It's going to want to break from bananas. Does that make sense? So it does that with essential oils. It does that with food. It just, it likes to have a little bit of variety. All right. So one was I'm blessed and highly favored. Four things that are going to rock your health in the new year. One, I am blessed and highly favored, changing our mind, changing what comes out of our mouth. Two, drinking half your body weight of ounces of good water every day three getting rid of processed sugar you are going to feel amazing i had, was on yesterday with a friend who said she just cutting out sugar she lost 11 pounds just cutting out sugar so how would that be for your new year's health weight go management goals right that's awesome and many people find that that's true there's other things that we'll talk about cutting out later but this this time this january this new year Let's just start out with one so it's not overwhelming, okay? Just sugar. Make this a sugar-free month. And I don't mean sugar-free replaced with alternative, you know, the the um, what we traditionally think of as sugar-free stuff. <clears throat> Be careful of things like sugar-free gums. If they're, don't, if they're not sweetened with xylitol, they're usually sweetened with an artificial sweetener. So be careful about that. One of my friends said eating sugar-free gum really keeps her sugar craving down. So she eats, I think, Spry which is a fairly good uh, gum. They used to have titanium dioxide, but they took it out. Just be careful with Spry that um, you get the kind, so a few of them have artificial flavors. So if you get Spry, just make sure it's not one of their ones with artificial flavors. All right. So we're gonna talk, we're gonna do healthy, we're gonna talk about healthy snacks this month. And number four in rocking your health for the new year. And this may sound strange to be something that would correlate to health, but I we're, we're going to talk about this is writing down your goals, not just thinking them in your head, but actually writing them down with a plan to get there. So I'm going to read you this little blurb that I pulled off <coughs> about a Harvard study that they did and why writing down our goals. Now, this was in regards to money, but writing down your health goals 
is just as important as writing down your financial goals. They are both equally important. Uh, Lauren, hello. She says she drinks sleek tea anytime they have a sugar craving. Okay, so that's fabulous. Yes, Lauren, thank you. So sleek tea is a product made by a company, Young Living, which most of you already know. Um, their sleek tea and their sleek oil may, for some people, help them curb that sugar craving. And from that same company, there's a drink called Ningxia Red that many people find also helps curb their sugar craving. Um, so, yes. Sleek tea, it's out of stock right now. Yeah, we'll we'll be hoping that comes back in. In the meantime, you could do sleek their their um, that company's sleek oil. Yes. Okay. I'm just making sure I've got these um, comments going. Okay. So reasons to write down your goals. Listen to this. Most people drive through life without bothering to write down their goals. Very few people have specific and measurable goals. That means you can tell when you've accomplished it. You can check it off because it's specific and it's measurable. And even fewer people have actually written down these goals. And even a smaller amount has, although, thought of a specific plan to make these um, goals a reality. But writing down your goals really does help, does it? Or is that a myth? If it really helps, what's the best goal setting strategy? Okay, so we're going to talk about this Forbes reported a remarkable study about goal setting carried out at the Harvard MBA program. Harvard's graduate students were asked if they had a clear set of written goals for their futures, as well as if they've made specific plans to transform their fantasies, their dreams and wishes into realities. The result of the study was that only 3% of the students had written goals and plans to accomplish them, only 3%. 13%, they had some goals in their mind, but they hadn't written them down anywhere. And 84% had no goals at all. So think for just a minute, which group do I belong to? Do I have written goals with a plan to achieve them? Do I have goals in my head, but I just haven't written them down yet? Or do I you know, not even know what a goal is? Have I not even written any down? So after 10 years, this same group of students were interviewed again, and the conclusion of the study was totally astonishing. The 13% of the class who had goals but did not write them down, so they had them in their head, they didn't write them down, they earned twice the amount of the 84% who didn't have any goals. Two times the amount, they were double the money earners of the people that didn't have any. Now the 3% who had written their goals the 3% who had written their goals and a plan to achieve them earned on average 10 times as much as the other 97% of the class. 10 times as much. So they really could say they accomplished 10 times as much. If this was your health goals, you could accomplish 10 times as much as those people who had no, no health goals at all or who had health goals in their head, but they hadn't actually written them down. So when you don't have a plan, you don't know how to reach your destination. This is very, very important. So even right now, as we're speaking, if you've already got a goal in your head, grab a tablet, grab a piece of paper and write it down. And one of the things I learned, this has to be maybe four or five years ago when I was at a convention and Bob Proctor was there. And I love Bob Proctor. He speaks a lot about the conscious languaging and the mind connection to what happens and what we speak and all of that. And he said to write, he gave everybody little goal cards. They were like a little business card. And he had us write down a goal six months from now that would be a little bit of a stretch for us, but it was doable. It was, it was possible. And I remember at the time um, I was earning with the company about $2,500 a month. And I thought in six months it would be a real stretch, but I would love to earn $5,000 a month. And of course, not everybody earns that with Young Living. All the incomes are different, et cetera. So um, we'll post an income disclosure below. Let me tell you, I wrote that down. I wrote, I want to take vacations with my kids because I was working so hard on my business. I wasn't doing anything else. And I realized I need to take some vacations with my kids. So he had us write down, though, on our cards, our goals as if they had already happened. So he already had pre-written on the card. I am so excited now that dot, dot, dot. 
I'm so excited now that I'm making a check of $5,000. I am so excited now that I had a great couple of vacations with my kids and we made great memories. I am so excited that I lost 20 pounds, whatever it happens to be for you, right? Only well, you don't want to lose weight because then you'll find it. So I am so excited that I released 20 pounds. <laughs> How about that? <clears throat> this is powerful. And some people will say, well, I want to write goals. I want to type them on the computer. You can do that. And I would also encourage you to actually hand write them somewhere because there's a connection between your brain and your hand when you're writing it that um, neurologists can explain to you, but I can't today. But there's a powerful connection to actually hand writing your goals. It sticks in your mind better. And when we begin to get clear on what we choose for our life to become, those things start happening. Um, now, my friend, I have a friend. I'm just looking at goals. I'm just looking at the um, comments here really quick. It's kind of hard to go back and forth between the two. Um, I have a friend who was had a real challenge with writing down goals, health goals, money goals, business goals, anything. She just she was freaked out because she didn't want to not accomplish those goals. And so setting something down like this is what I'm going to do and then not to do it was really frightening for her. And so one of our other friends challenged her to pretend like, say, this is the beginning of 2018. Right. So let's just pretend this is the end of 2019. Or, you know, this is the beginning of 2019 and you're looking back on 2018. And this friend had this other gal write out what what are you grateful for that happened in 2018? as if she was looking back a year and she just started writing, she was able to finally get it out. What, okay, if I were to look back on the year, what do I wish would have happened? What would I have liked to have seen happen? And she wrote all those things down. <coughs> Pardon me. And when she looked back a year later, she was actually able to accomplish most of the things on that page. They had happened. And she had never been able to write goals before. So if that's helpful for you, do that. Um, there's many goal setting helpful tips on the Internet. You can look at some of those. They do need to be specific and they do need to be measurable. And the more detailed you can get them, the better. So if you say, I'm so excited that I lost 20 pounds, that's great. Now we need a plan of those little things that you're going to do every day to get to that big goal of losing 20 pounds. I'm going to run up and down my stairs every day for five minutes. I'm going to go to the gym and exercise three times a week. I'm going to drink more water like Sony was saying on that video. I'm going to cut out sugar for the month of January and see how I feel. Whatever it is that you need, the smaller things, we've got to have those too. Because the big goal is great, but we have to have, to have a specific and measurable things that we can see how we're doing as we're getting to our bigger goal. So this works for health. It works for business and anything, any other part of your life, a relationship that you want better. What do you want it to look like? Um, I have a um, precious daughter the other day that I had her just sit down and write down what what does your relationship with your sisters look like? Um, what would you like it to be? Uh, be? Just because we were having some, you know, little kid, you know, sibling stuff, which always happens. And oh, my gosh, it was beautiful. What she wanted her relationship to be was beautiful. What she wrote. And so as she wrote that and realized this is what I really want, then those behaviors began to just automatically spring out of her spirit. It was beautiful. So your relationships, your health, your finances, your business, whatever that is, four things to rock your health in 2014. I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, I'm going to drink water, at least half of my body ounces in good water every day. Um, I'm going to cut out the processed sugar for at least the month of January. Just even if you just try it for the month of January, I would love to see you do it for the entire year because you're going to feel so amazing. But even if you did it for the month of January, I have a feeling you're going to lose weight. You're going to feel like all the inflammation is fading out of your joints and your body. You're going to feel so good. You're going to want to continue in February and then March and April and May. So now my 
my tips for you this this year and this month are going to be to give you some healthy snacks that you can take along with you so that you don't get tempted when you're out there on the road, right? When you're super hungry and you're, hey, we all get tempted, right? And you go and you're passing a McDonald's or a Burger King or something else. And you're like, I'm just so starving. I got to have something right now. And we swing in there and, and get that. <clears throat> I've done the same thing. So now I realize that I have to have things with me so that I can ha have a chance to eat something until I can get home and get something super healthy. So I carry my healthy snacks with me so that I don't get tempted. We're going to give you those healthy snacks this month. You're going to find some good, new, fun, favorite healthy snacks that you can take with you. Number four, write down those goals. And this is my commitment to you. So I'm just going to tell you one of my goals, as I said earlier in this broadcast, is to be on here on my personal page live way more often than I have. And um, over the years of needing to needing to get my own body healthy, 20 years ago when I was very, very sick and didn't know where to turn and no doctor could help me except for to prescribe drugs, which I didn't want. And because I went through that that really difficult time, now I get to share what I learned. And that is my goal is to be a blessing to you, a blessing to the entire community um, of Young Living, but even up, uh, uh, farther than Young Living, whoever needs to hear this message. So if you want to do this with some friends, share this message with some friends, share this video with some friends and do it together. Then you can have an accountability partner and then you can text message each other when you're feeling like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to drink that last glass of water. I don't want to. I don't want. I want that soda pop, whatever it is. OK. And you can be an encouragement to each other. So excited to get those recipes. Yes. Good. Yes, Nancy. Cutting out the sugar for January. Yes. Go. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you, Amber. Um, <clears throat> okay, so let's see. Robin says, is there good water you're talking about without heavy metals, et cetera, and is it purified? Yes. So go back and listen a little bit to the earlier part. Do you have an affordable solution or what am I meaning by good water? Yeah, we talked a little bit about that in the earlier on this, so you can go back and listen to that. Affordable is Affordable is a relative term, let me tell you, okay? So whoever thought we'd get to the day where bottled water would cost more than a gallon of gas, right? Where we would pay more for water than we pay for gas. Water is so important to our body. So I always say you pay now or you pay later, right? So something like a Berkey may cost $300, it will last you a long time. It will do many, many gallons of water. It will probably save you money in the end. So affordable is kind of a relative term based on, and if somebody needs ideas of how to increase their income, we have some solutions there too to help um, you uh, possibly afford some of the things that you want to do for your health. All right, great opportunity to read labels. You can cut out refined sugar, yes. <clears throat> that is very true. I became a label reader. My kids are label readers. They will not eat. They will not buy at the grocery store, even behind my back. They will not buy anything with pro white processed sugar. We just don't. Um, we eat fairly kosher. And so white processed sugar is actually processed with pork albumin. If you didn't know that, there's some white processed sugars that are pork processed with pork blood. It's part of the pork blood. And because I don't eat pork, um, I refuse to eat any white processed sugar, especially if it's not kosher, but um, we just don't eat any. Maybe we'll have we have a little candy box and maybe we'll eat a piece of candy every couple of months when we're watching a movie or something. It'll be an organic candy. It may still have some sugar in it, but we really don't. And the more you cut it out, the less you're going to crave it. And then but if you start eating it again, sometimes you start craving it again. So just be careful there. But once you cut it out and you lose the cravings, just stay off of it. It's so much easier to just stay off once you're off of it than to go off and on and off and on. You're welcome. You're welcome. So do this with a friend. Get accountability partner. More water. No sugar. I'm blessed and highly favored. And write those goals down. 
So I look forward to seeing what your health goals are. I look forward, if you want to share them with me, I would love to be just um, thinking about them with you, praying over you, everybody that's on this broadcast today, typing your health goals out, share them with somebody, Be get an accountability partner. And this year, 2018, make sure I get the year right, is going to be a rocking year. You are going to rock your health this year. And as you feel good, the whole rest of your life is going to improve. I love you. Thank you for being on here with me and have a great new year, um, a great second day of January. And I will be on here soon with some recipes, some good tips for you. And we'll just get this going, right? Let's do this together. We can do this. We can rock the new year, right? Okay. Have a lovely night.